Bless you. You're, 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 very, uh, you're very beautiful students. Uh, there's desire written right in your faces. And we appreciate that. We believe that in these last days, God's going to put holy desire within our hearts to know Him and to walk in His footsteps and, and to love Him with all our hearts and to have a tenderness toward God that maybe others have not had. And we, we're, we're so happy with you. And we're so glad that we can study together the, the Most High God, uh, seeing the Almighty. Uh, in, your, uh, in your teaching syllabus, page 61, we, we learn of the sovereignty of the Most High. Rulership and authority are very important. Uh, the Most High, and only the Most High, is absolutely free. Absolute, no, no one else is absolutely free. Uh, we, we are bound by conditions and, and, and laws. You, you're bound by time. You're not free from time. Uh, you, you live by time. You get up by it, go to bed by it, go to work by it. You're a victim of time. God, God is not circumscribed to time whatsoever. You see, you, you are, you're confined by energy. You can only do so much. Nobody here can lift up this building, spin it around, set it back down. You'd like to, but you can't. But God could. You see, God could. God, God could do that. And so only God is absolutely free. Only God has absolute authority. Everybody has somebody that influences their authority. He is all-powerful to express his eternal will and his eternal purposes. And no one can, you know, cause him to cease to do that. No one can hinder him, nor can anyone help him to perform his perfect will that is to be done forever. And no one can speak against his sovereignty uh, to, to make any, any change in it or to make any reduction in it or to increase it, or in any way to influence it. He is the Almighty. Reading from Psalm 83, uh, verse 18, uh, says these words, that men may know that thou, whose name alone is Jehovah, art the most high over all the earth. Uh, what a prayer to pray. And this same person, David, prayed it. That men may know that you, whose name is Jehovah, that you are the most high. Hundreds of millions of Hindus don't know that. Mohammedans do not know that. Shintoists do not know that. That you are the most high over the whole earth. Point number one, Deuteronomy 4, 39. Know therefore this day and consider it in thine heart that the Jehovah... He is God in heaven above and upon the earth beneath, and there is none else. There is nobody else. Everything else that you have is demons and devils and, and uh, those who are acting like they're God and they're nothing, you see. So here we are speaking of the sovereignty of the Most High. He is the sole total power. Anywhere in the universe, not just earth, but anywhere in the total universe. Now, when we know things like this, it should draw us into a new relationship with him. It should draw us into a new kind of reverence and respect for him. It should cause us to want to serve him and to please him in our lives. In point number two, First Chronicles 29, 11, it says, Thine, O Jehovah, is the greatness and the power and the glory, and the victory, and the majesty, for all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Jehovah. Thou art exalted as head, as head, O, above all. Both riches and honor come of thee, of thee, of thee. You give it. And thou reignest over all. And in thine hand is power and might, and in thine hand is to make great and to give strength unto all. Whew. That'll take your breath, won't it? Isn't that amazing? That the Most High is the owner and the ruler of all. And all that we can do is to be uh, those that work for him and work with him. And all that we have is his 
uh, we are his stewards to, to use what he has placed in our hands in order to carry out his will on the face of this earth. And, and that's it. And that's total. The sovereignty of the Most High. Number three, in Psalm 47 and 2, it says, For, the most, the, the, for Jehovah, the Most High, he is, he is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. There is no part nor partial in the universe where he is not sovereign. Nowhere. Psalm 83, 18, that men may know. That's the problem right there in this Psalm 83, 18. That men may know that you, whose name alone is Jehovah, that you are the most high over all the earth. And it's amazing that after all these years, so, so many millions of people are not aware of that, even as of this night. In Psalm 93 and 1, it says, Jehovah reigneth, he is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength, wherewith he hath girded himself. And the world also is established, that it cannot be moved. Not only does he reign completely and absolutely clothed with majesty, <laughs> with glorious light, but that also he's established everything here on the earth. It's established by him. It, it'll be right here and that it cannot be moved away. Nobody's going to move the earth off of its circuit that it's in. Uh, God's power will put it back in circuit again. It's going to run the course that God wants it to run. It's going to go around just like God wants it to go around. And all we can do is live here and enjoy. Can you say Amen. In Psalm 135 and 6, it says, Whatsoever the Lord pleased, that did he in heaven. <laughs> Isn't that something? Now, that was by revelation. David couldn't know that otherwise. Nobody could tell him because he had no teachers to tell him that kind of thing. Whatsoever Jehovah pleased, he did that in heaven. And then he says, he did it also on the earth. Whatever pleased him is what he did. And also in the seas and also the deep places revealing to us the total sovereignty of the Most High God. He does not counsel with anybody about what he does. He does it because he is a whole, a complete, and an absolute sovereign, not on the earth, but in the universe. All right, number four. The Most High enacts his will through his sovereignty. He, he doesn't give it in weakness and he doesn't say, would you please? Uh, he acts his will in sovereignty. And Daniel 4 and 34, it says, and I, and I bless the Most High, and I praise and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. And he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth and none can stay his hand or say unto him, hey, what you doing? Hmm. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? The most high enacts his own will in heaven and in earth. You say, well, that's autocratic. No, that's divine. That's divine. We are his creatures and he knows us better than we know ourselves. He knows what's good for us more than we know what to do for ourselves. And so therefore, his will is, is good for us. And it's also perfect. And I'm glad that we can walk in his will. Can you say amen? So the most, the most High enacts his will, and he does it because he is a sovereign. And point number five on page 62, uh, Jesus recognized the Almighty's sovereignty. In Matthew 6 and 13, he says, For thine is the kingdom, speaking speaking to the Father. And he says, and thine is the power, and thine is the glory forever. Amen. And that, he was teaching people how to pray. He said, if you want to know how to pray, this is the way you, this way you tail out all your prayers. When you get through saying all the little things you want to say, talk about something big. Thine is the kingdom. Thine is the power. Thine is the glory. And it's forever. And it's forever. And he said, that's the way to do it. So Christ was recognized, recognizing the sovereignty of the Most High and commanding us to understand it. Point number six, the apostles understood it too. In Acts 17, 24, it says, 
God that made the world and all the things therein, seeing that he is the Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worship with men's hands, as though he needeth anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one blood all the nations of men who dwell on the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitations, that they should seek the Lord, if haply they may feel after him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live, we move, we have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. We came from God, made of God. Now, the great apostle to the, to the nations, uh, to the Gentiles, Paul, was telling these people here in this center of culture and center uh, of education in Athens, the greatest center uh, on the face of the earth at that time, about the Most High God. And he showed them the sovereignty of the Most High God, that this is the God that made the world and all the things that are in. He is the Lord of heaven. He is the Lord of earth. He's not worshiped by things you make in your hands. They were just worshiping gods that they could see and feel and they'd made them themselves. He said, no, you don't. That is not the way you worship God. If you seek after him, you'll find him. You, you will find him. And, and he says, for in him you live, you move, you have your being. And he said, I want you to know it. You know, <laughs> yeah, I think that's the way we all have to preach. There, there are people today that don't understand that, that God is so great and so powerful and, and so wonderful. And, and uh, I think some of them think that God is just an influence and not, not a person at all. And when they meet him face to face, they're going to discover that he is a person, the Almighty, and that we should have followed him and loved him and served him. Also in the New Testament, in 1 Timothy 6, 15, the Word of God says, which in his times he did show, who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, who only hath immortality. See, that's a good one to make another little, uh, I'll have mottos all over your house before I'm through with you, looks like. Another little motto. This would be a good one in the bedroom. Who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man has seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Whew. What a revelation of the Most High God. You, you wouldn't get that playing marbles, you know. He had been seeking God somewhere. He had been praying to the Almighty. And he came with something flowing through him. How God, the only one with eternalness in him, immortality, dwelling in a light that men cannot even, cannot even approach it. Well, we've seen that through all these lessons. We, we have beheld that through all of these lessons. And here it is perpetuated down through the New Testament in the Acts of the Apostles so that we can also see it. At the bottom of page 62, in Second Chronicles 2 and 5, it says, And the house which I build is great, for great is our Jehovah above all gods. <laughs> great above all gods. The psalmist said further in Psalm 86 and 10, For thou art great, and thou doest wondrous things. Thou art God alone. Say alone. alone. That's the, what makes the devil angry because he is alone in this. And he, it makes him angry when we say Christ is alone. There are people in this country that will call you a bigot when you say that you can only be saved by Jesus. Uh, and if, it, if that's what you wish to call us, it's all right because the Bible says Christ is the door and no man enters in that door without Christ, you see. And that if you try to climb up any other way, you're a thief and a robber. You cannot get in there under any other name. You name it, you can't get in with it. You've got to come in through the one name, and the name is the Lord Jesus Christ. And there is only one Savior. There are not two, or three, or a dozen. And these people, and many of them in this city right here, will say, we're all going to the same place. The Bible don't say so. The Bible says, wide and great is the road that leads to hell, and many there be that go in. They're at. He says, narrow is the way that goes to eternal life, and few there be that find it. So they go in two opposite directions. You have to decide which direction you want to go for eternity. 
I'm going to take the bright and shining road going up to heaven. Number eight. It's on page 83. The sovereignty of the Most High extends itself throughout the universe, unlimited. And Deuteronomy 10, 14, Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens is Jehovah's, thy God, the earth also, and all that, that there, therein is. So there is no end to the sovereignty of the Most High. You can't find a spot of ground and you can't find a little animal that he is not sovereign over. Everything in this universe, when we visit the moon, he's boss up there when you arrive. If you ever get to Mars, he'll be boss when you arrive because he is sovereign over the total universe. Wherever you go, however you get there, when you get there, you're gonna find he's been there first and that he's boss there. And that's all right with me. Glory be to God, yeah. Number nine, God controls destiny through his sovereignty. Uh, now this is very particular, so let's, let's move into it very beautifully. In 1 Samuel 2, verse 6, it says, The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. The Lord maketh poor and the Lord maketh rich. He bringeth low and he lifteth up. He raises up the poor out of the dust and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he has set the world upon them. I'm sure that Nebuchadnezzar, you know, expected Babylon to be great, you know, forever. I don't think they had any idea that there'd ever be any great thing greater than Babylon. But they, they, they discovered that God can make poor. It's only a rubble heap over there today. Just a rubbish heap is all, that, that's all that's, that's left there. And yet, in a country where our foreparents came over here with nothing, look at the beautiful cities you have. You know, people that will respect God and love God can be lifted up. And nobody here needs to ever be where you are tonight anymore. That from this moment you can say, I'm going higher, I'm going bigger. In the name of God, I'm going to reach out to the Most High and I'm going to have it. And you can be more and greater than you have ever been before. But those that become proud and haughty, he can reduce, and he does reduce. The rich become poor, and, and, and he brings them low because of their pride, an arrogant way, and not in recognizing who he is. You know, it isn't what you say against God, it's when you don't recognize who he is. Even though you might just leave him alone, he wants to be recognized for who he is. And so you can't say, oh, I'm neutral. There's no neutrality. Jesus said, if you're not for me, you're against me. There's no neutrality here. And so if we don't boast about his greatness, we're talking about his littleness automatically. And so we must, we must speak of his greatness together. Can you say amen? amen. God controls destiny through his, through his sovereignty. He is so strong. America has been raised up in these last days. I think for the only reason is that we are the missionaries of the world. 90% of all missionary work on the face of the earth is done by Americans today. Nine out of every $10 out there winning souls is an American dollar. Now the rest of the world is rich, they're not poor, but they don't give, you see, to save the world. And I think God raised us up at this time, and if we ever stopped doing that, we'd go down. God said, I don't see any purpose in making you rich any longer, you can go back down now. And so what nations have at any certain time is in relationship to the knowledge of God and relationship to their thanking God and praising God for his goodness. Can you say amen? amen? In Job 9 and 12, it makes a statement that we've already mentioned before. It says, Behold, he taketh away, and who can hinder him? Who will say unto him, What doest thou? No one can hinder God. If, if God wants to bring... Uh, Hebrews or Jews from over a hundred nations in the world and set them down and they don't even speak the same language and, and they all call themselves Hebrews and they're all the colors on the face of the earth they're all kind of they're, they're, they're black Jews and, and brown Jews and tan Jews and white Jews they're all, they're all and, and for him to mix that together to make them a strong nation it takes the Almighty to do that because man can never do a thing like that you see and if God says I'm going to do it then you can't hinder him did you know that England lost her first piece of her empire right there by trying to hinder God? Yeah, I I England wanted to give it over to the Arabs as we think the Arabs are more honorable than these people and they gave it to the Arabs. God said, no, I didn't mean it that way, I meant it the other way. And so the people that had no army at all, they, they won the war without an army. God just caused them to do it, you see. 
That was their first war that they had. And so when, when God says they'll do a thing, nobody can hinder God. Nobody can hinder God. Well, we want to build this place right here that you're sitting in. 72 people in the neighborhood here signed a petition against us. Some of them are dead. A lot of them lost their jobs. Had to leave town. And almost all of them are gone now. Almost all of them are gone. If you want to buy a good house, they're for sale all around us here. They're, they're for sale. Yeah. It's a good place to live, too, right close to the house of the Lord. Amen. It's a good place to live. But you can't stop God. If God wants to do a thing, then you can't stop God. You, you, you start pushing against God, and you're pushing against eternal strength that you can't do it. When you see God doing something, if you don't like it, the best thing you can do is leave it alone. Yeah, but the best thing to do is like it. Whatever God's doing, jump and say, hey, I'd like to help you a little. And he'll bless you for that. Number 11, the sovereignty, the sovereign God defends his people. Uh, Psalm 89 and 11, for the Lord is our defense, and the Holy One of Israel is our king. Jehovah is our defense. It's difficult for us to get to that, you know. We feel like we've got to have this one defend us, that one defend us. God is our defense. And you stick in there with God and you will come out on the right side. And the Holy One of, is our King. He is our ruler. He is the one that we follow. He is the one that we love. He's the one that we're riding after Him because He is our King. Uh, number 12 says, There is no joy. There is joy because God is sovereign. Uh, in Psalm 97 and 1 it says, The Lord reigneth, let the earth rejoice. All the things we have said about, you know, the strength of God and the immutability of God and the sovereignty of God, uh, we, we don't say that to make you afraid of God. We, we say that to make you honor Him and love Him and seek Him. It, it, it's good to be friends of the top one, you know, in any business, you know. And, and to be friends of the Most High God is great, but you can't be His friend if you don't know Him. You know, you've you got to understand Him, and you can't understand Him unless you're taught. You only know what you've been taught. And, and so you, you've, you've got to say, hey, I've got an understanding of God. And in this understanding, you reach out into, and, and a greater knowledge and, and, greater, and greater blessing in the Most High God. If you're glad for it, say amen. amen. Yeah, there's joy. The Lord reigneth. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitudes of the islands be glad because God reigns with sovereign strength. It don't mean by any means that you call yourself a slave or that you, 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 you're, you're living under a cloud or something or another. That verse 2 says, clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. And so God wants you to be glad, you know, because of who you are and because of who he is. And, and don't say, hey, I want to hide from him. No, that would be just what the devil would want you to say. Oh, I'm afraid of him. No, that's what the devil wants you to say. We are to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our strength. The Word says so. And, and so, as we learn how good he is and how great he is and how powerful he is, then let something rise up within us and say, he's mine too. You know, he's mine. When Christmas, a boy got a, a pocket knife, a big, beautiful knife, and to the neighborhood boys, he was showing it all to them. They said, ah, oh, oh. He took it back and put it in his pocket. He says, but it's mine. <laughs> it's mine, you see. It was a beautiful thing, but it was his. So when he show you about the magnificence of God, the greatest thing about it is he's yours. You know, he's yours. He, he's really yours. This God that we're talking about in all of his strength and all of his dynamics, he's yours. Yeah. Yeah, so we're not trying to build up a wall here so big you can't get over it. There is no wall. The wall has been broken down and Jesus has made a way into the bosom of the Almighty. And because of that, we walk into his presence and, and he loves us and we love him. Can you say amen? amen. Number, number 13, it says God's sovereignty demands reverence. We know that it does. And we do, we do reverence him with all of our hearts. Number 14, you can read those verses later. The most high gives us the wisdom to worship him. And Daniel 2 and 30, blessed be the name of God forever and ever for wisdom and might are his. He changeth the times and the seasons, moveth kings, setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom to the wise and knowledge of them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep and the secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him. And so now it says here that he will give his knowledge and his wisdom unto us. So you and I can expect God 
to do great and beautiful and wonderful things in our own lives. And that because he is great, he can do things for us. There's no one here that God can't do miracles for. There's no one here that God can't give you a revelation that would astound cities and states. There's no one here that God cannot bless in such a signal way till all the newspapers will have to carry the story. And so let's move in toward the bosom of the Almighty.